Hello friends and welcome back to our never-ending quest of trying our best to ball on a hundred dollar per day budget everywhere on planet Earth. Today we're in Singapore, we've got 3.75 days here because four is an unlucky number here and I'm learning a lot of places. So put $375 down in whichever corner it goes, maybe this one. So we didn't do all the normal getting into Singapore things like riding on a budget airline for like 12 hours, filling out our SG arrival card, getting a little bit of money out of the ATM, and then picking up this awesome Avengers themed Easy link card that uh, my nerdy self is very in love with. And usually by now in the video, we'd be trying to get as far away from the airport as possible because normally being in the airport is by far the worst part of any trip. But we're at the best airport on planet Earth, which is a tourist destination all in itself. Do you see that steam? Yeah, it's a sign that we've been here too long now. It's time to go. What an incredible airport. I mean, like, I wonder if you grew up your entire life here and you thought that all airports would like this and then you, like, fly into an airport like LAX or LaGuardia and you get there, you're like, what is this awful place? I mean, this airport has, like, everything. So just a quick list here. They got a rock climbing wall. They got trampolines, they got waterfalls, they got basically every store you could possibly think of. Interactive games, including a bunch of different arcades. Art exhibits, a gigantic slide, a free cinema inside of there and an IMAX that you gotta pay for outside. And to top it all off, and I think maybe the most ridiculous thing, is a pool on the roof where you can watch the airplanes come in and out that's got a hot tub. Okay, now we just gotta take the train to our hotel, drop off our stuff, and then it's time for food. I'm starving after that overnight flight. We knew exactly what to get for our first meal in Singapore. Dim sum. I am looking through this menu and they have all the good foods and it looks so good, smells so good. Normally though, when I come to dim sum, there's like six of us. There's only two of us. So that limits how much we can order and we're on a budget. So I think we're gonna only order three or four things. Gotta show some restraint. <laughs> Handwriting so bad, so embarrassing. Yay. One of my favorite parts about dim sum is the experience of it. You get to try all these different foods and share them. My approach to ordering for dim sum is basically picking out my favorites. Chicken feet, and then I have to get a rice of some sort, and a couple of dumplings, and a bao. So we got siu mai, which is like a pork dumpling. Hot, hot, hot. hot. Great first meal in Singapore. Now, Chinatown. Okay, so right at first blush, Chinatown can seem a little like gaudy and very like tourist good focused and it absolutely is uh, right when you get out of the train station there's just like shop after shop selling basically the, the same stuff that you can get almost anywhere but if you're looking for cheap souvenirs there's no better place than where we are right now besides maybe the Mustafa Center in Little India but if you just go like a little bit deeper and a little bit outside of the center of this there's incredible food really cool temples that we're gonna see in just a second and we're still on the hunt for egg tarts because we had two for a little appetizer and we got two egg custards or dan tat and because she upsailed me so good I also got a custard bun but I'm going with the egg tart first mm. like a warm hug sweet warm hug this massive Buddhist temple right in the heart of Chinatown is called the Buddha tooth relic temple and yep you guessed it Supposedly a tooth of the Buddha himself is contained within these walls. Now, whether or not that's true, I mean, the actual tooth on display is like three inches long. But hey, what do I know about Buddhas or teeth? 
That doesn't really matter because the temple is absolutely spectacular. It's four stories tall, it's got a huge museum and a beautiful rooftop with 11,111 Buddhas complete with a massive prayer wheel. We walked around admiring this incredible place until the weather told us that it was time to move on. Wow. Okay. So we waited the rain out by the highest reviewed cats on Google Maps, that's right. These are some five star felines that you're looking at. Once the rain let up, we could see and hear Singapore's oldest Hindu temple. I mean, it's right next door and they were making preparations for the biggest festival of the year, Diwali. We've seen quite a bit already, but I think we're getting a little bit, a little peckish. So we're gonna stop in here for some food. This is one of Singapore's 119 legendary hawker centers, just filled to the brim with safe, delicious, affordable food from all over the world. Each one of these 13,000 hawker stalls around Singapore specializes in something, usually one or two dishes that they are well known for and do better than anyone else. It's been a few hours and we haven't had char kway tao yet, so I'm gonna get some of that. We're at the Chinatown complex and our favorite stall here is this char kway tao place. They serve it with cockles and char it with the fire of a thousand suns in a wok so experienced that it's probably older than the person cooking with it. It's beautiful, charred, spicy, delicious, and somehow only three dollars US. It's like flat rice noodles, stir fried, and just walked out. I don't know how to say that better. Just stir fried up in a wok. And I love the sound. I love the sound of the metal against the wok. Good food being made here. Mm. So savory, so good. What'd you get? Chicken rice time. <laughs> the national dish of Singapore right here. Three dollars and fifty cents Singapore, which is like two and a bit dollars US. Gets you all this food and the soup and this awesome spicy sauce stuff that they got here. It's just Hawker centers like this, I mean, you better get used to them if you're watching. We're going to be at these places a lot. Are, in my opinion, where all the good food is in Singapore. We're finishing up and we're going to return our trays at the little stalls. And I'm looking at a non-halal stall so that we can keep the, the trays and the meat that are non-halal separate from the halal stalls. That's just so, that's just so cool. We are in Chinatown, but everywhere we've walked, we've seen Malaysian food, Indonesian food, Chinese food, Taiwanese food, Indian food. I mean, we went to a mosque, a Buddhist temple, temples of all different kinds of faith. And it just feels like from the visitor perspective, it feels harmonious, natural almost. And I, I can't remember a place that I've been to that felt just like that, where all of these things coexisted and it was normal. Anyway, you should definitely return your trays afterwards because it's the right thing to do and if you don't you'll get fined. What a great meal. <laughs> From Chinatown we walked around the marina to see the symbol of Singapore. No, not that one. Not that one either. Nope. This one, the Merlion. But he was out on holiday. Everyone needs a break sometimes, even mythological uh, fish lion creatures. Here's some stock footage of him when it's not uh, resting or on vacation. We made it to the marina and it is so pretty. Stopped raining and we are at quite possibly one of the most iconic spots in all of Singapore. We've got the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, which is impossibly large and wild with the boat on top and infinity pool. Maybe someday we'll be able to stay in it, but it's really nice to just be on the water and see it. We are going to walk all the way around and head to maybe the other most iconic spot here, the super trees. I always feel a little bit too unfancy to be in places like this, but this place does have some pretty cool things. Like there's the fake Venetian canals that go through here, some really cool artwork and 
and pretty fancy displays and, and a pretty affordable good food court. Oh yeah, and apparently a nightclub. This place is obviously totally free to go into besides the fact that you have to go through the gift shop that is the gigantic casino and mall and other stuff back there. There are also paid experiences that you can go through in here. We showed those in previous videos. What we're doing right now is we're just trying to get good seats for the show that happens every single night. I think it happens at 7.45 and at 8.45 every night. such a beautiful show. I feel like no matter how many times I see it, it just makes my heart and my eyes cry. <laughs> uh, we're gonna head out of here, take the train this way, and um, grab some food. It's dinner time. Yep, that's right, off to Hawker Center number two of this video. I mean, you're gonna see a lot more before we're done here, but this one is my favorite. I know it's really hot, but there's something about soup and noodles in one ton that I just, I'm craving. Giant plate of satay, I love this. Look at this huge portion of curry. It's all about the simple things in life. Meat on a stick. Never said that before. <laughs> tell you this is our hotel let's show you this is it we got two beds yeah. one oh, two we got a shower look over it. there look it's pretty it. good it's pretty good pretty standard decent hotel we paid 64 dollars for this per night we're in the Geelong district which is known for a couple of things one really affordable cheap budget hotels like the one we're in and it's also it also happens to be the red light district but that being said, we love the area. It's really safe. We, you know, avoid certain streets and we have a lot of access to really, really good food nearby. Like really, really good food. Anyway, that's it for tonight. See you tomorrow. Right? Yeah. Humidity is just nuts here. How's that? Oh yeah, back to Old Airport Road. Time to see what they have for breakfast. Good morning from our old familiar friend, Old Airport Road Hawker Center, where we are taking part in some very strong coffee and about to eat some very delicious Singaporean breakfast. Uh, yesterday was super jam-packed and really fun, but today we are equally excited because we're gonna see a lot of different sides to Singapore that we didn't get to see yesterday. Yes. 
wow, that's a lot of bread. I got me some Kaya toast. Kaya's coconut jam. It's this nice, like, mixture between super sweet deliciousness and butter. It generally comes in green. Very common around Singapore. Mm. Delicious. What'd you get? I got peanut butter bread. It's just bread with peanut butter on top. Sliced into nice little cubes. After a totally balanced and healthy meal of just literally all beige food, it was off to Bugis Junction in the nearby Arab Street. I love this area. Okay, so this part of town between like Bugis Junction and then Lavender Station just a little bit to the north all the way over to Little India is so like vibrant and filled with life and incredible smells and sounds and colors and it's just so much to love about this place. And we're gonna head up to the Sultan Mosque which I think is right behind us over there. The mosque welcomed us in with some visitor garb. There were no videos allowed, but photos are, so here's some of those of this peaceful, absolutely beautiful place. I think I've never been in a mosque before. Everyone there was super friendly. It was so interesting and, and beautiful to look at. Everyone's so welcoming. It was, cool to, I don't know, to learn a little bit more about a different culture and different religion that I honestly didn't know too much about until today. Okay, so now we're at Haji Lane, which is the area just like one street south of the Arab Street. And this is definitely like the nightlife area at night. Tons of good happy hour This place is kind of insane every single night in a very good way. And then during the day, it's kind of a chill cafe street, which is what we're getting right now. Tons of great vintage shops here as well. But if you're like staying in this area, staying in a hostel or one of the hotels nearby, this is where you come at night. Okay, so now we've made it to the Mustafa Center, which is kind of like the north side of Little India. They have everything here, everything you can possibly think of. And our quest here is gonna to be to find the weirdest thing amongst a place filled with incredibly esoteric, just wonderful things. Careful of the words you say, keep them soft and sweet. You never know from day to day which ones you'll have to eat. And then we finally made it to the heart of little India and just wow. Okay, we made it to Tekka Center, which is the hawker center that is in the middle of Little India, and I'm really, really excited because I've been looking forward to this all trip long. We're gonna, we're gonna have some tasty Indian food now. I think we need something to scoop this up with. I think all of this together was like $11 US, which is just incredible. Mutton biryani. Mm. That's so tender. 
and so spicy. I've been dreaming about this Hawker Center and the food for years now. So good. Favorite one, hands down. We are now walking just a couple of blocks down the street and honestly I think this is one of my favorite parts of Singapore. We could leave little India and now just be here. We made our way down past Fort Canning Park and along the river until we were reminded that it was, in fact, the happiest of hours. Okay, we found this place that has Ching Tao and Tiger beers for like three to four bucks. It's overlooking the water, sweet view of the Marina Bay Sands. So peaceful here. I'm sure it gets a little bit wilder later on in the night, but I think we're here right at the right time. It's like five. That was a perfect stop. Okay, I know this is gonna come as a total surprise, but we're heading to another Hawker Center, yes. Looks like everybody's getting off of work now, and uh, I'm starting to feel extremely underdressed. We're right in the downtown area, surrounded by like 60-story buildings everywhere you look. It's absolutely beautiful, and I absolutely feel like I don't fit in. Lao Passat is probably the fanciest of all the hawker centers in Singapore, which means that everything is like one or two dollars more, but they also have much more variety than most. I couldn't decide on what to get, so like the smart, small business owner that I am, I did some outsourcing. Okay, give me two numbers. Two and seven. No, no, okay. Okay. Give me two numbers, one between one and 50. Okay, 42 and then one between one and 20. 18. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the 42nd stall, you said 42, right? And then to the 18th thing on their menu. And that's what I'm gonna order. Everything here is good. This is gonna be great. Uh, Bye. Which way should I start? Which direction? Here? I don't know. This says seven. Okay, I'm gonna start this way and I'm gonna work my way around. Bye. So I wandered and I wandered, showing off my incredible grade school counting ability. Thanks, Mrs. Leonard. Five, six, Seven, eight, okay. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Man, there's so many stalls here. This is awesome. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Until finally. Okay, so slight problem. Uh, 42 is actually a coffee shop, which only serves things that I'm literally allergic to, which is coffee. So we're gonna go to 41, maybe 40. Okay, so I tried to go order that thing and they don't have it. They don't have the number 18 at that restaurant, so I'm just gonna try the one right next to it. Where it's turned out to be harder than I thought. Okay, so I ended up with the clay pot chicken rice, is what I got here. This stuff looks so good. Mm. Oh my god, that's good. You gotta try this. I got the Mi Soto, I think. It's apparently the, uh, the first Michelin B Gourmand place here. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna look it up. But <laughs> I already got soup all over me, so you know it's a meal. It's a really good meal. I mean, this place is, I think, Singapore's oldest wet market. It's been around for 150 plus years. It's surrounded by skyscrapers everywhere, and and it's still maintained its beautiful interiors. And I don't know, there's something special about this place that feels like it's holding on to tradition, holding on to the old, almost like protecting the old, even though all this new has moved in.
We just made it to the Marina Bay Sands Hotel area and we made it just in time because now we're gonna watch the light show. I mean, today was an incredible day, but this light show is such an awesome freeway to cap off the night here in Singapore. like golf claps <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> oh wet here that was awesome that was awesome was that awesome that was awesome this place right here is without a doubt my favorite place in all of singapore these little like weird wooden lounge chairs that they just have sat out here i remember the first time i came here just like young kid from Wisconsin in the middle of nowhere made it all the way out to Singapore here I'd never seen anything like this and I remember going and seeing that light show like we just did and then coming out here grabbing a beer and just laying back in these chairs and I sat here for hours and I remember thinking like how could a city possibly be this beautiful also yeah I mean that blew my mind as well the fact that you could just drink a beer in public here Nerding out right now, we are on the helix or the double helix bridge. This walkway even has the four bases G, C, A, T for guanine, cytosine, and A, T for adenine, thymine, the four bases of DNA. So cool, nerding out by. Just on the other side of the helix bridge is my favorite man in all of Singapore. Yes. Just a slab of peppermint chocolate chip ice cream. The best kind, two wafers right in between. Look at that, look at that. let me get my face up. Look at, it's just, you know, I know I've said this before, probably in the same video, probably no more than 10 minutes ago, but it's really about the simple things. Also, this uncle's been here forever. I think it's the same guy when I first came here back in 2012. I think it's the same guy. I love it. You gotta protect this tradition. If you're here, the other side of the Helix Bridge. Another perfect day in Singapore. More hawker centers, 13 more miles of walking, watching the light show, getting all nostalgic, and visiting the ice cream man. Day three, coming right up. Okay, so we are out at Hoare Park right now and I figured that since we spent the last couple days doing mostly like city stuff, that it was time to do more naturey stuff. We're gonna start from here and we're gonna walk all the way across this super cool bridge through the thing that I totally remember the name of. Mm. Through the southern ridges all the way to the absolutely iconic Henderson waves and then finishing up on the park on the other end. recommend it's very beautiful it's so green and the aesthetics here are so beautiful it's so green it's so green did I say it was green it's green Wrap it up with another walk. 
a beautiful hike and just the perfect way to start out a day. I think I would have started a couple hours earlier if I could do it again, but uh, we are warm and hungry, which means we're heading to, of course, another mall. But then we saw this magical thing. <laughs> that is so cool. They just have fresh orange juice machines right on the street. Tap for straw. Tap. Okay, so now we're at Suntech City, which is home to the Fountain of Wealth, which is, which used to be the biggest water fountain in the world. Now it's the third biggest. Uh, two in the desert were made that are much, much bigger than this, like Dubai and Saudi Arabia. The reason that we're here is because of all the stuff lining it. On the inside, you can kind of see all these glass things. This is just a gigantic food court filled to the brim with deliciousness. There were just too many to decide, so I once again tapped into my middle management skills and did some more outsourcing. Okay, so there's 18 total stalls, so give me a number between 1 and 18. 12. Okay, and then give me a number between 1 and 10. Seven. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11. I definitely know what I got, for sure. Uh, smells good. Delicious. Delicious. Way too hot. Continuing proof that anything that you order here will be delicious. No matter what. I went with an oldie but a goodie. Soy sauce chicken rice, baby. Lisa is recording lots of train footage. Uh, just every door opening, closing, door opening, closing. All of them. For your viewing pleasure. To continue our day of nature adventures, we decided to embark on a grand quest. Continue to unlock. Uh, I almost domino effect all those bikes. That would have been bad. Biking all the way back to the airport. This is all bike path. This all of it. This is so cool. And there's like nobody out here. What we found on the way was just endless kilometers and miles of some of the most beautiful, flat, and well-maintained bicycle paths anywhere on planet Earth. Singapore's 525 kilometers of bike trail. I mean, for context, the whole country is only 50 kilometers wide and 30 kilometers tall. And apparently they're gonna triple that amount of bike trails in the next few years. This is so cool. All of this is dedicated bike pedestrian paths. Like, it's incredibly beautiful. There's stops along the way. It feels so safe and just protected and so green. We even saw a monkey just hanging out. Then we happened upon this super cool wakeboarding park. I mean, we definitely got to try this next time we come, even though we'll for sure not be as good as these guys were. You getting hungry? Yes. I think we're almost to the hawker thing. Let's go. This place is so awesome. It's right on the water and it smells like really good satay everywhere. And the bike path is literally right next door. Once again, there were far too many good choices to be able to make a decision, but this time, instead of outsourcing, I just bought everything. This day was turning out to just be a perfect conglomeration of all the things that I love. Do you guys know I like french fries? 
I also got something new. I've never tried this before. This is papaya. And I was suckered in by the guy saying that in 2017, some newspaper that I've never heard of rated him as the best papaya in all of Singapore. Which I totally believe. Did you see all like, the newspaper stuff they had in front? Whoa. I don't know what's in this. It's like a little sweet and peanutty. Tons of vegetables. It's really good. It's like a tasty veggie burrito. I know that that's, that's incorrect, but it is very good. I got Hokkien prawn fried noodles. It's this delectable mix of, I think, different kinds of noodles with egg and prawns. So good, the spice is right. The noodle mixture is very interesting to me. I really like it. Yay! I am loving this day so far. It smells like durian, that place was awesome, and everything here is so, so green. This park is incredible. Everywhere you look, there are just trees, and beautiful, beautiful nature everywhere. And the thing that I just can't get over, I mean, we spent the morning hiking in the, the heart of Singapore and it was incredibly green amongst all this, all the skyscrapers. Because even the buses here are electric and they're painted green. Buildings, skyscrapers with greenery everywhere. I read that Singapore has legislation that makes anyone who's building something new they have to replace any greenery that they got rid of in the development of the building. That's so cool. It's so cool. After watching a few planes roll in, it was time to enter the absolutely terrifying Changi Jurassic Mile. Oh my God! Real dinosaurs! <laughs> Almost there. We had made it past the dinosaurs and to our final destination, the airport. Hello, friends. That's so cool. When was the last time you biked to an airport? It like brought us all the way to the airport. We're at Terminal 4. And it's cold water, too. This is such a luxury. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> So incredible. I've never thought about biking to an airport, but now that I now that we've done it, I would. Tired and hungry, we made our way back to an old friend. We got some pork rib. Pork rib soup. This is good comfort food. So tender. Reminds me of my dad's cooking. Shalom, wow. <laughs> Look at that little dragon dumpling right there. <laughs> that is super hot. I cannot eat that yet. You know, while I'm waiting for the Shalong Bao to cool down, which it'll probably be a little while, there's something that I keep noticing everywhere that we go, and especially in the hawker centers, is that it's everybody's job here to keep things clean. And I think for the most part, pretty much everyone does. Obviously, in these hawker centers, this place would turn to absolute chaos. Trash everywhere, stuff everywhere. People didn't take their trays up and put them away. The unsung heroes of this whole place are really the stewards that you see just like going around picking up all of the various like foods from people, doing the dishes, bringing the dishes back. They're obviously incredible, but they do have some help. And we see this everywhere that we go, like a big old pile of trash, God picked it up, it wasn't even his, picked it up and put it in the trash. And I just love seeing that like extension of everyone feeling like they should take care of Singapore. That just makes me so happy to see and just gives me like faith in humanity. It's such a simple thing. Today's our last day in Singapore, but our plane doesn't leave until later, so that means we have just enough time for one more adventure. Sunscreen. See if 
if we leave the camera in the room and then hit record and then leave, then it looks like we got a whole camera crew and stuff like that. Or, and but we just we really just gotta come back and get it every time we do it. So that's, yeah, let's go. Some preparations are required for our little adventure today. What'd you get? Got some spring rolls, got some eggs. started to feel a little weird on the way. There was no one else around, nobody in the train, nobody in the station, just nobody. We started to wonder if what we had planned was a good idea or even a real thing. Once we made it to the pier and we saw the boats nearly running into each other, all the food stalls, coffee in a bag, and we picked up our ferry tickets, we realized that not only was it a good idea, it was the best idea we'd had all trip. It's a coffee and a bag. A coffee and a bag. And a short but beautiful 20 minutes later, we spotted land. We just got to one of the islands outside of Singapore called St. John's Island and it is mega beautiful, super, super remote. There's nobody out here. We did see a lizard-like thing and that was about it. So today's our last day here in Singapore, but we had the full day available. So we wanted to get outside and see a different part of Singapore that we've never seen before. So we are walking across now to Lazarus Island. Quote Stephen Huff for a second. There are two types of people in this world people that like spring rolls and liars. <laughs> Our flight is leaving in four hours, so unfortunately, it's time to head back, finish packing, and get on a plane. But there was one big thing stopping us. Close call.
Okay, packed up, ready to go. On our way, we noticed something weird. It was super busy and everyone else heading to the airport didn't have any luggage. More on that later. We made it to the airport with time to spare, so we got to enjoy all the finer things that this place has to offer. We wandered to the butterfly garden. We went to a lounge to have our last Singaporean meal. What'd you get? This might be the only time that I can actually have chili crab. Because it came with the lounge. We even caught a showing at the free movie theater. And we started realizing that Singapore has done the impossible. They've made an airport awesome enough that people come here to just hang out on their weekends. Turns out, that's what all the people from the train were doing. There are so many people here today, and all of these people came off the train with us. No suitcase or backpack. I mean, can you really imagine going to your local airport just to hang out on a Saturday? It's like a party! <laughs> it was equal parts baffling and wonderful to see so many people just enjoying their home. I mean, I get it. In just three and a bit days, we ate Michelin-rated food for $3, biked all the way to the airport dodging dangerous dinosaurs, took a 20-minute ferry to eat egg rolls on a remote beach, got all teary-eyed while watching a tree-based light show, saw breathtaking temples and mosques, got fresh-squeezed orange juice from a magical vending machine, got all nostalgic about chairs with beautiful views and nearby water shows, had happy hour right on a river, saw this guy, ate incredible dim sum and were shuttled around to all of it by cheap, comfortable, fast, air-conditioned trains. I mean, I get it now, why no one was coming to the airport to leave, because where else has all of that? 